Hello, and welcome to a new series on speculative evolution. These videos will be about a seed world project. Seed worlds are planets that humanity or some other type of intelligent force seeded with Earth life forms, which are left to evolve and diversify in this new context. Two examples of popular seed world projects among the speculative evolution community might be Serena, A Natural History of the World of Birds by Dylan Bajda, or Tales of Chimer by Keenan Taylor. In today's video, we're focusing on a planet inhabited solely by cattle, along with some insects and other invertebrates. The surface of this world is covered in prairies of grasses and small weeds, meant to feed the cattle. This planet is approximately the same size as Earth, with similar conditions thanks to a terraforming project performed by humans. It was designed as a cattle farm, with lifeforms carefully selected to craft an environment perfect for producing the finest milk and steak. After an unknown event, the planet was abandoned, leaving the cattle and other lifeforms to evolve on their own. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. I intend to make more spec biology content like this, along with some projects on subjects like world building and analog horror. If you enjoy any of these, then I'd suggest you to subscribe. I also would like to apologize for the lack of content on my main xenobiology series. I was working a job over the summer that took up a lot of my time, and just when I had finished most of the artwork for episode 4, my hard drive broke. I hope to be getting that data recovered soon, so hopefully episode 4 is on the way. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Once the cattle are abandoned on the world I'll be calling Apollo, the first thing they'll do is multiply. A planet covered in an ideal food source, and without predators, is the ideal environment for a population boom. And boom it will. In only a couple hundred to a few thousand years, the cattle's numbers may have grown so fast that there's not enough food to go around. At this point, genetic changes from the seeded species will be minimal. Fast reproduction, meaning features such as quick sexual maturity and high number of offspring, will be selected for. However, as the population exceeds the food supplies thanks to a lack of predators, competition will swiftly become fierce. Behavioral changes are likely the first major adaptions we'll see on planet Apollo. Migration will be key. The massive herds can easily devour all grass in a given area, and thus must constantly be on the move. Since all land habitats on this planet are designed for grasses, the herds may end up circling the planet like a giant line of lawn mowers. Of course, the grass will grow over time, and likely faster than the herds can move. This may result in populations that travel behind the main herd as the grass regrows, or rings of similarly sized herds with distance between each other. Alternatively, the herds could oscillate the grazing, with populations claiming large patches of land that they travel around, although this could prove inefficient. Due to this period period of overfeeding likely only lasting 10,000 to a few hundred thousand years, so Apollo's herds will adapt a less organized strategy of circling the planet in several very unorganized rings. Another adaption may be changes in body size. Different species will adopt different strategies. A smaller animal can survive on less food, leading cattle to grow smaller and reproduce more quickly if possible. If a population has a beneficial strategy like this, it would be evolutionarily disadvantageous to reproduce with individuals who don't employ this strategy, leading to selection against mating with differently sized animals and the planet's first speciation among its cattle. Alternatively, a larger, more aggressive animal takes up more space and wields more power. A massive cow could scare away or even kill competition for grasses and space, thus obtaining grazing land for itself. Perhaps some populations grow to large body sizes, maybe even doubling the height of an average individual of the base species. With these increased sizes may come increased aggression, with loud, showy displays to scare off anyone who's too close. A larger body might also allow these cattle faster movement, enabling them to reach untouched pastures quicker. Longer horns, on both males and females, can be used as intimidation and weapons against rivals and competition for grass, growing wide and pointed for gouging and creating a larger space around the animal. While some species may evolve longer legs and lighter bodies for faster movement to reach new grasses, there might not be enough time yet to dramatically change a cattle's body plan into something more graceful. Despite these adaptations, competition for food will be as fierce as ever. If there aren't enough grasses to go around, eating another food source may become necessary. While no cattle are likely to be specialized in anything other than grasses by this point, some groups may broaden their diet to include other food sources. Insects are a likely candidate, making a good source of nutrition easily found amongst the grasses already eaten. Pretty much all cattle will probably eat them by mistake, 
but some might actively catch a small bug they see fluttering around their noses. Algae is another potential food source. The oceans of this planet, which may be more like giant lakes, will probably be clogged with green mats of photoplankton and algae. These waters may also have massive populations of zooplankton, and both these lifeforms could serve as meals to the cattle. Perhaps some groups may adapt to wade in the water to eat algae, although it probably won't make up their entire diet. They might only supplement it with marine photosynthesizers when they don't have enough grass to eat. Another potential food source is carrion. Adapting to eat it may take longer than adapting to consume some of the other grass alternatives, but real cows already supplement their diets with small animals on occasion. And with corpses being so abundant, having only invertebrates and rot to consume them, there would doubtless be groups of cattle adapted to take more than a few bites. As consuming carrion becomes more common, perhaps with freshly dead cows being almost fully eaten by others around them, or scavenger subspecies, active carnivory might follow. It would likely start with killing calves or individuals adapted to smaller sizes. Such behaviors would likely evolve in the larger, more aggressive cattle, who can't as easily be fought off by a protective mother or a potential victim. These cattle might start with stomping prey to death, or eating defenseless calves alive, but may make the process more efficient with a killing bite. This could be facilitated with large larger heads or sharper teeth, but massive changes to their body plans aren't likely to occur this early. With these advancements, and the advent of active predators, the dynamic on planet Apollo will change. Thanks for watching! I'll see you in about a million years, in Apollo's story at least. Although I might make a video on what the non-mammalian species on this planet have been doing in this time, or something in another project. Until then, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.